welcome to two thirds focused ish. I'm Rasmus, and I'm Red. What's what's two thirds of two thirds? Well, it's, that it's would be a six. A... Four six. Two no. six. <laughs> Four six. That's more. <laughs> It's complicated. That's what it's going to be. No, yeah, uh, it's yeah. it's four fourth ninth. Four ninth, yes, correct. Yeah, sure. Okay. You have to add the upper part and multiply the lower part. He's done maths before. I I, I have. If I can't eat it, I don't trust it. <laughs> yeah, no, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Al, how the fuck are you doing? You can eat pie. That's maths. Ooh. The, the best part of maths. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thirsty. Stay Cheers. hydrated. Yes. What are you yeah. drinking? By the uh, way? Cobra. Which is a beer? Tea. Okay. Uh, I think it's made with rice. Oh, really? It's quite delicious. Interesting. Yeah. I guess this is this is the drinking episode. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they all? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. But how are you doing, Al? How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm, I'm going through some changes. Yeah. Again? Not in the, not in the biblical sense. I just, yeah. Lot, lots happening at, at the shack end. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What would be a biblical change? Um, like rain of frogs? Yeah. Skin yeah. Skin like changing? Fish, like yeah. mutation? More Big arms? Rock. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I only saw that film with Russell Crowe and I've, I've no frame of reference. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> not the best one. But Bu yeah. Building a boat. You're not building a boat. That's what you're saying. <laughs> what? Romper Stomper? No. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm moving, moving on, moving forward. I'm keeping on. That's great. That's good. Very good. How about you, Red? Uh, good. That's yeah. right. So, so we're That's just saying we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're just doing good. We're good. Just doing, okay, I, we're, I guess I forgot to lead into what we did this week. But okay, fine. That's it's not what you sense. asked. No, I, I know. I, I, my mind has been all over the place. You, How are you, Raz? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah it, 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 Let's start there. <laughs> How are you? We know your mind's all over the place. That's not news. <laughs> oh, but uh, a bit extra scatterbrained, if if you can say that. So, sure. fun things first. I had Dan come over this week from hey. Somerset, Bevel fella. Dandles. Hey. Using all the names, just in case someone knows him. <laughs> uh, he came on Friday morning to help me out with a big market here in Oslo that for the first time is business to business. Mm -hmm. So trying okay. to do more wholesale things and get my stuff into shops. A specific but, market or a blacksmith market? Uh, no, so this was just a big market. Just well, it was called uh, also Design Fair and it was more of an interior design thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a lot of, there was, like, there was garden things, there was like, toys and knickknacks there were also then interior design work and there was lamps there was a shit ton of lamps okay yeah for some reason but uh it was an interesting experience like first off like suddenly i'm selling to people who want to sell things mm -hmm. and not people who necessarily want my thing they set themselves but also they advertised of saying like, oh, we are expecting, we, we have like eight to 10,000 visitors. I think we barely got close to a thousand. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Because of the weather or, or because people are not interested? In oh, the weather is a different story. The weather is a different story, but yes, okay. possibly parts of the weather. But also, I mean, I don't fucking know. All of the markets <laughs> I've been to the last year plus have, I've sold less. I've sold like 40% less. Mm -hmm. every single every single market compared to 2022 mm -hmm. but i don't know how well that translates further along and also like everybody who has been to also the sign fair multiple times they were saying that well it's been going downhill for the last five years wow so it even started with before covid mm -hmm. or maybe they are saying like the year before covid noticeably, noticeably worse than just before that and then COVID happened and shit. So I don't know. But the weird thing is that despite how few people came up to my booth and I didn't get any direct orders at the market, I think that was to my benefit because I was so new and so different. And not that 
I went out and talked to everybody, but it seems like I was one of the very, very few who actually made the stuff they're trying to sell at this market. All right. Okay. Which of course also led to earlier on, I had the conversation of like, oh, so if you earn like 10 X, can you just 10 X your production? I was like, no, uh, it's just me. Windmills <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do not work that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, there was a couple of those conversations early on until people like pr properly understood like no i am the one making everything i'm trying to sell there's some limitations there um but it was a good experience all in all it's just i'm still now in the just days afterwards sort of waiting and vaguely hoping that someone will contact me and actually place an order hmm. and there's some really cool places that came up and was really eager everything from breweries who wanted custom bottle openers oh, nice. to museums and people starting up shops, which granted, then that will be in a year, 18 months ahead. Yeah. And a few garden things and cafes. And so it was a lot of interesting places and things that wanted, at least seemed to want my stuff in their shop. But of course, it's a whole decision making thing, especially when you're so new into the scene as I am. Is that is that like also kind of the danger of it, that your kind of goods could go anywhere? So it's really hard to kind of focus on an audience because, like you say, it could go into kitchens, it could go into homes, it could go into businesses, it could, you know, it could go into yeah. retail as people just selling things, like, as goods. This, yeah, is one, and... this is one of the challenges that Dandles had, actually, was like, mm. who, who am I making this stuff for? I know what yeah. to make and I know how to make it, but who's it for? Yeah, and we had lots of conversations about that yeah. and also discussing people and like granted like he was just sitting there listening to me jabbering on in the region and half the time trying to guess what the conversation was about which open also sandwich, was... uh, pickled fish yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shopping trees down with frozen herrings <laughs> uh but but yeah so we had lots of conversations of that, of that style of like well it all depends on how we you package it hmm. so we had the epiphany of saying like well fuck it i should probably go to a wedding fair yeah and oh, try man. to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Try to get my roses and like uh, all of and, and like the rings and things that I make, yeah, like yeah. show that off there. And, and that I would have... be that would be unique in that environment. Yeah, and and of course, I can also hope that I can get into the sword making for lesbian wedding <laughs> market, which I would cake, be fine with. Cake got in. Yes, cake, 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 cake swords. Yes, the whole market there. <laughs> so it's it's a whole thing. Um, but as of now, I'm still a little bit stressed out about the thought of I spent a lot of money going there. And I also had Dan come over and he spent nearly a week here and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I hope something happens. Mm -hmm. And I've had like one good email saying like, you were the most interesting person there for us. But nothing more has happened yet. So was it Interpol that they sent the emails? <laughs> <laughs> You're That's a person of interest, best. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the uh, same thing as being interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> How about you, Red? How was your week? Uh, good. Same as last week. A uh, lot of you did nothing. Stuff. No, I I did some some things. <laughs> I I made. Uh, I'm currently making it. It will be finished probably tomorrow or, or the day after because it needs drying time. I'm making a Viking chess board out of leather. I, it, it's the game with a lot of H and N in the name. And, and falafel? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> the, the, the whatever. No, it's not pronounced falafel. How is it pronounced? I have no idea. I need I did to Google what this, what this spelled like because I have no idea. H N E F uh, A F <laughs> L A at the end, maybe? something like that oh Hefnafatl. yeah that yeah <laughs> uh for a client uh and it was way more challenging that i i anticipated because it's uh it's basically a grid mm. and he, the client wanted some decoration engraved in the grid uh at some specific places and the decoration has to be dead center on one of the square of the grid and that but five times uh so just finding the right settings for the laser engraver and setting everything in order to be exactly where it's supposed to be uh well, was a bit of of uh, of a challenge and, and quite time consuming but it's, it was fun to do 
fun to make, and I I hope the the client will will enjoy it. Um, so yeah, you I just, did that. Just board? No. Nope. Just the board, PCs. not the PCs, because he already had as the PCs, so he was very specific about ah. the size of the thing. He wanted all, all the squares to be to be two inches, so he can use the the, the PCs that he already have as. Um, so yeah, that, that 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 was a fun build. Um, also worked on my car. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, we're sticking <laughs> all of the bingo boxes today. Yeah, because I, I was I was tired to to spin uh, on the road. It happened twice during the past ten days. Wow. Uh, once because once because of the snow, and the second time it was because of the rain, and so I I had to to find the reason, and I discovered that my back tires were. 23 years old uh mm, <laughs> so it yeah. doesn't work doesn't work no. anymore <laughs> um so yeah i had to buy new tires put the tires on and the no 23 year olds want to work these days anyway no right? no exactly the young people and tires are oh, fucking up um i had to change my exhaust pipe as well because it was a bit too old and tired and broken um so yeah that that kind of stuff uh, for me what about you, Al? What did you do specifically this week? Uh, specifically, um, I've, I'm getting to the end of the camper van build. Yeah. Ooh, so nice. I've been um, like doing a lot of plumbing. Uh, so like mobile home plumbing is a bit different to just putting in a tap in your house. Um, so it's all plastic because it has to be light. It's like and... There's a combination. So a lot of it is there's like rubber tubing, but also plastic tubing. Mm -hmm. um, but then also when you go under the van, there's metal trunking because you want to protect everything. Yeah. So it's a real combination. It's not just like one system. It's quite complicated. Okay. Um, but it's also a mix. So there's also a diesel heater. So there's also like that kind that side of things. Mm -hmm. So exhaust and intakes. And then there's all the electrical as well. So I've been doing all the wiring. So there's these three kind of disciplines and, and it's all, you try, try to fit it all in one tiny little cupboard in the back of a van. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. So I've been drawing out like the map of the pipes and nice. where the jo where the joins are and where it clips on and I've made like a board and stuff. It's really quite satisfying to do. And then it's all a mess. And then you realize if you flip something around, you can have the pipes going in the other side mm -hmm. and, and suddenly you don't need as much pipe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really kind of, yeah, time consuming but cathartic. Yeah, um, exactly. But then I sliced my veins open with a Stanley knife, and then uh, kind of, uh, and then in the middle of this, there was a huge storm in England, and the the power was out for three days. So I was trying to build a really? camper with no power and no hand. Come the light? No light. Well, dark? I managed to wire up the van to then run off the battery to then have lights. Wow! <laughs> and then wow. I could even charge my tools from the van because there's an inverter yeah right so i was i was basically working in the van for four days right. <laughs> how, how did it did you just leave the van running then to charge up the battery um, no there's a huge power bank oh a huge power bank which i i luckily had charged from the house the day before yeah. just pure coincidentally um and that it was it's so big this thing um and it literally ran for four days it's That's incredible yeah um, and, but also, if it wasn't such terrible weather, there is also solar hooked up, but there was no sunshine. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that would yeah. also have helped if it was in summer. That's cool. You've been I've having saw, lots of fun. Yeah, I've I've saw I've saw I saw my dad building a few camper van when I was nice. younger, and when he was, he never bothered drawing maps of the wires or whatever. It was just like. Yeah, I think the good. wires, <laughs> the wires, you could probably get away with just kind of shoving it away, like behind yeah. the panel and closing yeah. it off. But because the pipes is like you said, red, some of it's plastic, some of it's mm. rubber, and there's joints and and like the pump has to be mounted and everything. Yeah, you kind of need to work out where it goes because it also it's inside cupboards, so like mm -hmm. I can't have everything in this. You know, you can't just move from one cupboard to the next, or you've yeah. got to drill holes, yeah. and then and so you kind of do need to work it out. What are you putting in the van, though? Like a shower or just a, um, a sink yes, and, and everything. water? It's, everything. And it's and it's not a even power a power hammer. It's not even a bit. There's a power hammer. Nice. Uh, nice. It's just a. a <laughs> um, it's only a it's only a medium van as well. It's not even a long wheelbase. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, there's there's a, a diesel heater, there's a, um, a shower point, there's a sink, there's four beds. Um, okay. Wow. Yeah. Like w a big one and and there's, two there's smaller. A double one? bed out the back. Yeah. And then the two front seats fold. Uh, sorry, the two back seats also fold, fold back to a double bed. Okay. I want to also put a fifth bed underneath the bed, like a like a bunk bed. Mm -hmm. Oh, like in what is normally the garage in the back. Yeah, yeah. I think you could slide a single bed in there. That'd be cool, um, for a kid maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, there's like a TV in. I've just hooked up like a sound system in there. Nice. Um, yeah, this it's it's a really nice build. Um, but it's, it's for what, client, right? It's for a client slash friend. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what's the base again? What what's the vehicle that you're using? The Mercedes Sprinter. But I mean, they're okay. all the same. It, basically, it's an it's an Amazon delivery van. Okay. Um, because I think every Five years or three years, Amazon just get rid of the whole fleet and replace them all. Yeah, it's cheaper than than maintaining all of them. And now I know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they are fucked up. Because they, they are, are fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like every, imagine a door that's been opened and closed mm. five hundred times a fucking day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't and the work. suspension and the way it's the people good, drive yeah. and yeah. And also weirdly, like Amazon, um, put loads of restrictions on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. For the purposes of it being a delivery van, so they like disabled the Android head unit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but like on a molecular level, they didn't just unplug it. They like they, they did something to it so it doesn't work. Um, it's got this weird engine cut off thing to save fuel for the delivery driver. So every time yeah. you stop the van, it cuts off. No, it's like not like not like a stop start like normal. It just mm, yeah. cuts out. The doors lock whenever you leave the vehicle. So if you leave the key in the yeah, back, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. And oh, like the, each door opens differently depending on which bit you lock, because obviously if someone's delivering on yeah. that side of the road, you can't have the van being open from the other side. Yeah. So wow. there's so yeah. many. Yeah, there's so much shit wrong with this van, and like it's the opposite of what you want to have children inside. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, the doors lock and you can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You, you just though, made yeah. a livable death trap. And now I'm adding a diesel More. engine, <laughs> water and ele electricity in the same cupboard. All of it yeah. made by me. <laughs> Don't forget and to put some ventilation if you're making the bed underneath the bed for the kiddo because it's going to be... And there's like, that's cool. where the diesel heater is. Like right yeah, there. Yeah. And I'm like, carbon monoxide and then oh. the exhaust is under the bed. I'm like, this can't be safe. <laughs> <laughs> but you it's... trusted me with this. <laughs> But Lots of people ask that question now about everything you do. Listen, I've done <laughs> people's breaks for them. <laughs> and have any of anyone have any one of them been able to come back and complain? Not that I know of. No. <laughs> <laughs> they can't come back, they can't complain. Yeah. Same Where's for that? body bags. Never had, had a complaint about those. Ooh, leather body bag. Ooh. Expensive. Yeah, well, go out in style. Mm. Dipper or or a zipper or, or a lace? Like oh. pop buttons, rivets. Uh, okay. Yeah. Pop rivets? Why not? Oh no, just just sewn up. Yeah. Like that, that's part of the service. You come it, you It's supposed it. to be final, so yeah, <laughs> you, exactly. you can you can stitch it. Yeah. Isn't that what they used to do? I don't know if it's a myth. They used to the the final stitch would be yeah to go to in, the nose. in in the nose or in the okay. mouth depending yeah, on the mouth. yeah yeah why just to make sure he's dead hmm. yeah yeah but not not only because they, you're supposed to have checked before by by <laughs> yeah. biting, yeah. You would biting the toe of the guy you know you know that is right? that a French way nibble a bit on the toe <laughs> I I'm not sure it's careful, right? it's, it's specific, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> French or unique to France, but that's that's how that's why we call uh, undertakers uh, "hoc mort" in French. That literally means uh, dead biting, like you bite the guy who's dead to be sure that is is not just sleeping or or unconscious or whatever. So, yeah, sounds more like a kink to me, but okay. Okay, make <laughs> yourself out. Like it, why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, oh, can I can I tell about the weather we had though? Well, no, we did okay. that last week. <laughs> Nobody we had. Now go crazy. on. So 
well, one thing was Dan was leaving like the crazy British weather and mm-hmm. then coming to Norway to mm-hmm. more crazy weather. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know what the temperatures like you had it at uh, on Thursday, but when he landed in Oslo on Friday, I think you had negative 23 or something. Holy shit. Yeah, we don't get that. <laughs> by, by Monday, it was plus seven. Oh. Yeah, that, I think it was Tuesday here. It was like in the teens. It was like 15, 16 degrees. It was really weird. Um, yeah. My, my mate was like, why is the wind warm? Yeah. <laughs> 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 this. Did you just beat yourself? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the really wild thing was on Sunday morning when we're going to the venue, it was negative nine and it was raining. Oh, so I no. and I have my car in the garage. So it's like, well, my car is fine. I back, I start right away, back it out. I close the garage door. I get into the, into the car and I look at the windshield. It's like, I can't see out anymore. Yeah, yeah. I saw the story. It was super <laughs> safe to drive. No, no. So, <laughs> so I scrape all of that up. I back out. I I get driving. I get down on, on the highway. I pass one off ramp. And then I realized I can't see out anymore. Yeah. So I asked Dan, "Can you can you guide me to the next off ramp?" He <laughs> pokes have... his head out the, win- out the window. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Yeah, it's here now." <laughs> you should have asked him to poke his head out of the window and scrap the windshield while driving. <laughs> that's that's way more efficient. No, but it would be on the wrong side of the car. It wouldn't work. So like <laughs> off off the highway, uh, through a roundabout into like one of those petrol stations where you have to cover over. Stop there, scrape it all, everything off, and we wait a few minutes for the car to heat up and the windshield to heat up. Yeah, we do that, and then we think, okay, this seems fine because we're under cover; it doesn't freeze anymore on the on the windshield. Mm-hmm. So we drive a bit more, and it starts freezing again. Mm-hmm. So we get a few more stops down the highway just before it sort of turns off into the right direction for Alton Region people who actually know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I, we pull off into the bus. Uh, at the bus stop and like yeah we need to scrape again and there was one guy in front of us doing the same thing <laughs> and when before he left another guy joined us at the back <laughs> doing the same thing so it's like well we're nice sitting here for, yeah we're nice just sitting here for a few it. minutes just scraping off ice all of us having a blast nice and nice. then we start driving again and this time like the windshield is warm enough so it doesn't freeze right away. It just takes a while. So as in we were driving, like the ice were just creeping in from the sides. <laughs> like do you speed up or slow down? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Mostly slowing down. Mostly slowing down. It was like, it, it just it like came to the point where it's like, yeah, it's cre- it was creeping and then it stops. <laughs> and then you hit a tunnel and it goes back again. Mm. And then you go out and it goes a bit in. So it's like, yeah, we, we got there with two two ice scraping stops nice. uh that's, that's good that's good but uh dan was like does that happen often and i was like no it's the first time for me like he was there yeah to, to, but, to test it. i mean worst case i will just have stopped on the side of the highway and yeah sure. as we, and as we were driving we saw like another five people who had done that so it's like yeah uh, i'm not the only one who happened to have not have heated windshields and if mm-hmm. i had that hopefully maybe less of a problem but Old car, so mm. French car. Yes, that and also. that's probably the, the problem. Yeah, we 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 don't build cars to go minus twenty five degrees. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not supposed to happen here. No. So, yeah. Yeah, but you're, you're French. You're silly anyway. Yeah, we are. We are. But Al, you were you were teasing us about something really exciting. Or yeah, so the pos- possibility of something really exciting. Prior to this uh, fantastic conversation, I also had another fantastic conversation um, with someone from a TV production company. Oh. Um, and it's not the first time. Every now and then I get random messages from people saying like, oh, you, you're an idiot. Do you want to be on TV? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. are the, the, the calls? Is that a requirement for English TV to be an yeah. idiot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. Um, they don't want authority figures or anything like no, that. They don't want yeah. people to laugh at. Um, so it was about six months ago, I had a very similar conversation with a completely different TV company on a similar sort of idea for a show, mm-hmm. sort of kind of making fun, that kind of thing. 
um, mm. but not necessarily about kids, just about like creativity and um, being able to do stuff with very little tools and little knowledge, which I thought was a bit insulting, but like as in not necessarily being like a master of something, just having a go and, you know, mm. making the best of what you can. Um, and this show sounded great that um, it was not not your typical kind of like reality show it was a bit more about like just try to get people interested in, in inventions and, yeah. and, and making and, and she kept using the word like bonkers and crazy you mm -hmm. know it's it a bit more kind of Heath Robinson kind of Wallace and Gromit kind of thing I was like yeah right. this is this is the kind of shit that got me into this was when I was a kid you know just yeah. making stupid inventions like I can't be bothered to get up out of my seat in my bedroom when I'm a kid. So I, I rigged up like a bunch of string yeah. with weights on to the light switch. So I could just, and, but also like when mum and dad were coming up the stairs and I should have been in bed, I could just pull the string and they would yeah. turn the light off. It's like, <laughs> now you can just get fucking Alexa to do that. It doesn't matter. But back then it was, it was all about strings and pulleys. Yes. It's just like, yeah, pointless stuff like that, like making a hammer out of bacon. And yeah, she was loving it. Um, and I think she was more interested in hearing about us and the maker community and mm -hmm. she, she i think she was of the idea that she wanted a show with people on who could make things so she tried to get in touch with like builders and engineers and like people who are doing it professionally i'm like no yeah. no, no, no no what you <laughs> want is total amateurs <laughs> you you want the crazy people like you al on the internet who failed at this and they're now doing it for fun or for comedy value um but like in seriously i was saying no they're the, the people you want to do this are the people who are doing it for the love of it mm. not doing it for a living because the people who are doing it for a living they're already doing it and you're not going to get them to quit their job to come and spend three months in a caravan on a tv production set no. yeah you, you need people like us who who are not conventional who you know live weird lifestyles and have weird friends um and will do basically anything <laughs> for anyone <laughs> with no reward um, <laughs> that's the kind of people you want in your tv show and she's yeah. like oh tell me more give me some more names so i've given i've given them all your names <laughs> <laughs> so oh, dear. If, if nicola contacts you basically it's about this tv show <laughs> I have to admit, it would I'm be not hilarious. <laughs> no, I, I, I fully expect you to just have thrown all of us yeah. under the bus. But that but, bus but, would be so much fun, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we probably would have to build the bus before it, it passes over. cat bus from Totoro. Yeah, yeah, no way back to that. <laughs> Damn. I mean, it's, it would be hilarious. It would be a lot of fun if we were able to do some kind of crazy... Like, It doesn't have to be a TV show, but just have that thing of gathering a lot of crazy people and just say like so here's a challenge yeah and this, have... this is what it sounded like it didn't sound like a formulaic today the contestants you know like and which one will be eliminated it was it was more like right everyone's together how are we going to solve this problem um and she likened it more to like taskmaster the tv show yeah, yeah. where it's just like bonkers ideas and someone's in charge and it's like a weird set and it's like mm -hmm. a weird it's kind of a weird little fantasy world taskmaster isn't it <laughs> um but i never really thought about that until she said it it was like yeah why is it they're in like a throne and it's this weird like edwardian house and everything's like velvet and gold and, <laughs> and, and there's a butler it's like well this show's fucking weird <laughs> like it already yeah and it's like, well, yeah it, the show needs to have like an identity like that it can't yeah, be sure. a, a cookie cutter studio show it needs to it needs to be like um i don't know what shows you guys had in 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 your countries when you were kids but like um things like fun house and the crystal maze where like the show itself has a personality and the room mm -hmm. all have an identity Ooh. and people remember the actual the sets yeah. for being fun and different and interesting and memorable and kind of like i mean dragon's den's a bit boring but you know everyone remembers the building in dragon's den and the lift and it's all industrial and there's you know there's a personality to it yeah. it's not like the apprentice where it's just in a fucking office mm. <laughs> like the job's about being in an office i don't want to be in an office <laughs> put me in a <laughs> warehouse down by the docks you know there's yeah. that far interesting so yeah i was i was, I was in. it, but i, I also yeah. said like if, if if you don't want me for the show i'll happily just come and help you make the show because it sounds great yeah be a set designer or something you know yep 
I mean, likewise. I mean, if if possible, that sounds like exactly the thing where it's like, it would just be hilarious to be able to say, I helped out. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I did a thing in the corner over that. there. You should see yeah. that. It's hidden. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably it more interesting. <laughs> it's probably more interesting to to be involved in that kind of of show than than being a contestant for the show. Know. Yeah, that that was kind of my angle. Like the more she was talking, I was saying like, I'd much rather make this show for you. <laughs> yeah, I, it must be a very very complex uh, process though to create that kind of show because I'm sure there is a, a lot of the. Uh, legal aspect of it, bureaucracy. yeah, bureaucracy and and how to get pe people to work for a TV show for that period of time, like probably uh, uh, taping a few show in one day, and mm -hmm. so there is all the, this all uh, behind the scenes things that must be very complicated. But when when you just get rid of all that, because it's probably people in suits in offices that take care of all that shit. If you are only in charge of the craft, creative, creative aspect of the show and just having fun, brainstorming and, and giving ideas to make the show very interesting for the audience, that must be fucking fantastic to do. But like you are... that, that to me is why YouTube is so interesting because mm. it gets rid of all that stuff mm. to an extent. I mean, there are, there are corporate YouTube channels, right? But it, individuals being creative and sharing it on a platform without all those inhibitors is amazing. I yeah, I, I fully agree. I would object though, and I, I, I think that's a conversation we had with Braz not that long ago. Um, you're always uh, limited by the amount of space or money or time that you have because you're only you're working by yourself to develop your own channel. And it happens that I have some crazy fucking stupid idea for a video and I'm like, yeah, but I can't make it. I can't do it the way I would like to make it because that's just me. And it, the idea would require uh, to go to a specific place. It would take two days. It would require a few people to shoot the thing that I want to shoot. And I can not be the only one to create all the costumes and stuff for the scene because again that's that's only me with my budget and my time and my constraints with the family the kid or whatever mm -hmm. so having that kind of ideas but with a, 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 a tv production behind you that must be so fun to do but the, if, the, the problem i have and it's it's the same in a lot of the industries is it's so siloed mm -hmm. so you will have this sense. group of people uh, like in a silo, so like a um, I don't know what a containment or yeah, yeah. So uh, and but no, I, Raz, I, just I, just I, a silo where you put grain, no, a missile <laughs> silo. You know what a silo? Oh, oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. The Chinese ones you know, filled with water. Holes in the ground that you put a missile in. Heard of them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was a silo. Okay, okay. Um, or a, a tall cylindrical building on a farm with corn in it or grain. Yes. Haven't you seen the, the TV show Silo? That I no, I haven't. About, it's really good. Watch it. Yeah, I, I know. I, I just I just finished For All Mankind, season four. Great. Good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> these these industries are so isolated, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. That's where I know. Um, that we might all be having congruent ideas, right? Thinking similar ways, right, to what you're saying, mm -hmm. but don't want to have anything to do with it. So... If you went to a TV company and said, like, I've got a new way of making a TV show, they'd be like, no, this is how we always do it. This is the people that we always use. Mm -hmm. These are the set builders we always, you know, and there's no way you can change that yeah. because of economies of scale and the production budget, blah, 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 blah. And it's the same in any industry. So, like, printers, animators, videographers, you know, nobody wants to break the mold and go, yeah. what if we let, you know, and that, but that's when interesting thing happens. When, when someone lets... Um, uh, someone who makes music videos direct a movie, that's when something interesting happens. Mm. Yeah. Or someone who's never done anything before. It's like, oh shit, this is different and weird. And mm. you're not constrained by the things that you're normally constrained by. But, n but no TV company would ever do that. Can I, can I be the devil's advocate for, for a sec? You're French. Because, of course you can. B b yeah, thank you. Because, uh, and I like doing it. Um, I, <laughs> I, I fully agree with everything that you said, Al, but, but, <laughs> but 
if you let someone like someone who makes as you said music yeah. direct a movie maybe there is a lack of knowledge about the language of cinema that that person doesn't have and therefore the final product that that this music person would get in the end the result might not be understood by people by the general public who's so used to have the same kind of movies and tv show that they now understand even though they never studied it they now understand the language of cinema well, you, an bit. you answered the question in the question there probably people wouldn't uh, understand it or appreciate it because it's not what they've grown to expect so people have been conditioned to just expect a certain thing from the cinema and anything that isn't in that formula language is just a formula and if it's not in that language yeah but yeah it, i mean it, it doesn't work it just do, means it takes a bit more effort uh yes and no do you know do you know um christopher christophe averti a french director from the 60s and 70s uh, it's, a bit, it's a little bit before my time for french cinema i was more 90s okay. french cinema. <laughs> um he is he, he, he was a crazy gen genius he was right. he was getting rid of all the language in mm. cinematography. He was like, no, I I want to do this this way, and express my idea and my creati creativity like with a hundred percent of freedom. <laughs> For a long time, people were this guy is batshit crazy. It it doesn't make any sense what he's doing. Nobody was able to understand because the language, the common language between the audience and that guy was lost in the movie. Yeah. So. There's, there's a few, I, I, I don't say that you have to go by the book to direct a movie or whatever, but there's a common language, at least a basis of, 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 of codes mm. that you need to use. Like when you're using a, a gun in a movie, you know what a gun is in a movie because you've seen movies before with guns being used. So you know what's, what unless you David, unless you're David Cronenberg, unless, uh, unless you, and then it's interesting in, unless you introduce a gun in a movie and Which explain a that, the, that the gun is not a gun it can be a phone it can be it can be a machine to to teleport or whatever so you establish a new rule and a new code and a new language for the the old duration of what you're trying to to give to the, the audience but are we not in the era of new language and new code right now yeah yeah we are we are I mean, but i mean i would say like tiktok is a whole different language than Instagram, or especially YouTube. I totally agree. But if you, so, if you, if you, <laughs> like, like, it, it is a different experience to scroll on TikTok than it is to watch a YouTube video. Just on how they want to get your attention, and also the tropes they are using are so yeah. well established inside of the ecosystem of TikTok. Mm. And it takes you a couple of seconds to realize, like, oh, so this is an established thing. It's not just a fun gimmick for one person. It is the whole platforms that's way. I wouldn't say it's new language though. I would say it's a different format, it's a different style. But when when someone is making a video on YouTube or on TikTok and is going off frame on the right, you expect the camera for the next scene to be on his left because there is this continuation of the scene. And yeah. that's something that you understand without having having read about it it's it's just so natural for your brain to understand and if you go against those rules it fucks up the, the whole comprehension of the scene like unless when you're able to do it so consciously that you are telling a story in contrast to the typical narrative <laughs> sure sure but it can be it can be very bothering for the for the audience as well you know this code when there is two two character uh, chatting you have to put the camera at certain angles yeah. to to, yeah. to make the the scene being understood. If you mm -hmm. go uh, on the you put on camera on the other side of the two character, it, it doesn't mean shit. You don't know who's talking to, to who anymore. Yeah, and that's the code of cinema that people can trans transgress and make their creativity be more understood by the people that, as you said, yeah, uh, um, not Jan Al. Force of habit, sorry. Um, <laughs> if they if they make the effort to understand them, 
And if you are, uh, if they don't, it's like what? What's the fucking movie? They are, they are. Who are they talking to? And you give up on the idea. You can't, you can't be focused or interested in the thing. And that's the the quote unquote danger of letting people who, who don't have the that kind of base uh, theory language or codes uh, do someone else's work. But that can be also very interesting. Again, totally agree with everything you said, Red. But. What I'm not saying is let someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's about it's about using a different skill set or a yeah. different language. Because you can communicate in a different way. Yeah. In a way that people are commun- <laughs> in a way that people are familiar with. And and I think the music video analogy or video game analogy, you know, someone mm. who knows like if you you you, you get a a boomer, right? Who's mm. watched a million movies and knows all how movies work. And give them a video game, game controller. They will not have a single fucking clue how to play a video yeah. game. They have mm-hmm. no concept of how to move in the world or be a character in something. Sure, you know yeah. they, they they can emotionally connect. Well, boomers can't emotionally connect, um, but they can <laughs> they can understand the character's point of view in a movie or a TV mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. not in a video game. Yeah. It's got a completely different language, but you could cross that boundary somehow. You know, you you can use those skills. Yeah. And I think we need to get, and it's back to what we were talking about, this this formulaic version of everything. Mm. It's like, oh, it's another TV show, another reality TV show. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be. No. It can be a show on television, but you can do whatever you want. The risk would be to be so different and so original that the audience wouldn't, wouldn't understand it. So then, so then you use, like, familiar characters. To make it to make it more approachable, or you use familiar <clears throat> themes, you know, or, or and, and this is why I really like the idea of the show having a a visual theme, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether it's set in a medieval yeah. castle, or yeah. you know, or, or um, a, a mad well, scientist laboratory or something, mm. or in so a big industrial like, estate. Yeah. That... Oh, I know where I am. Yeah. You know, I yeah. don't really know what's going on, but at least I know where I've got that security blanket. I know. Mm. We don't have those really on French TV anymore. Uh, right. We used to in the eighties. Uh, the, the, a few show, a few shows had this very strong identity because of the the set, the background. It, it was like you said, like a medieval castle. Mm-hmm. They still have those in Japan. Like it's yeah. it's what makes the TV show. Takeshi's Castle. The show is about yeah, the. Yeah, not, exactly. It's not called Takeshi's fucking uh, obstacle course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was where I was going to, and and it 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 was one of the first show that went um uh, like very famous uh, like worldwide recently, but was very very popular in Japan in the eighties, and now it, it taught them that a TV show needs an identity, and so the set. You 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 can watch one second of uh, any TV show, and by the set you know what show you are looking at. Uh, you are watching. Uh, you you know what you can expect. Uh, is it a fun TV show? Because there is a a very very strange strange atmosphere, like you said, a, a madman uh, lab or whatever. So you know it's going to be fun. Or it's uh, what I bangumi like. It, it's it's a TV show made to say jokes. And to have the audience laughing because there is a lot of bright color in the in the in the background. So the, all these identities are very strong. Would that work in England though? Because I don't remember what uh, watching or I watched a lot of English TV show, but I don't remember um, noticing that those backgrounds or those sets or those atmosphere are very, very strong in, in English I think, TV. I think it's the same. It was in the nineties. Yeah. And that was, that was what the TV shows, the TV shows were not about which celebrity have we dragged out to, mm. to do a voiceover. Yeah. It's, this is the show and the show is the building. Yeah. Or the house, you know, a lot of TV shows back then were about the house. Mm hmm. And and it was what was happening in the house, and there was even different rooms, and you go in the different rooms, and there'd be different things going on, and that was what was interesting because you you would get you were going from your house, which is boring, mm. to an interesting place, whether it's yeah. a castle or an island, or you know. I just had a brainwave. Go on. In the dream scenario of you can do whatever the fuck you want in a TV show, have to make your monster design the workshop. Oh my god! <laughs> there nice. you go. But how how memorable would that be? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Every, and kids would love it, and it's visually, but every every 
like tool in the shop is a, a living creepy organism you know? <laughs> yeah that would be cool like it's it's yeah. street it, it it was it yeah. a, a thing that yes. too yeah that like the the the, the garbage monster and all the, all the stuff like yes. that yeah we had we had well we we had one of those in France like uh, around the same time when I was a very young boy, there was this space where one guy was introducing um, cartoons and animation movies, and the set was very bright, a lot of colors, but some objects were living creatures. Mm -hmm with eyes and and mouse and they were having a conversation and that was that was making it was making the fun the show just fun to watch those boring bits as a kid that you don't want to watch because what you are want to watch is the next uh, uh cartoon and 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 movie when there's a guy talking you don't care unless he's talking to a trash can with eyes and a big tongue <laughs> That that makes the, the thing fun and catchy for, for the audience. So I would love to see a TV show where people are, are making stuff with tools and every tool I has googly eyes is bright yeah. orange yes. and, and yellow. <laughs> every and... time you use the hammer, it's like screaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not again. <laughs> but like not not with effects added, like in yeah. making fun. It's just no. the tool itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, must yeah. And and no explanation, no no cartoonish thing on the screen, yeah, yeah. just like the real thing. That would could, be could cool. Could make it all seem like it's just inside the head of some deranged pe person. Yeah, why not? That could be the set. Yeah, that could yeah, be yeah. the set. Or pretend it's the set. Like you're in my head. We're gonna build stuff. Yeah, yeah. And in your head, you have different moods depending on the day. So you have you have different rooms. Uh, hold, hold on. If if this is gonna be a British show, should it be inside of Colin first heads? Yeah, that could be nice. <laughs> we don't have nice. tunnels, <laughs> tunnels, <laughs> and underground. underground stuff. Everything's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the show now. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. go make it. Go make it, please. All right. Yes. How it advances the, the conversation, though? Do you, do you have any idea if it's going to happen or if you're going to be like really involved in it? Have you signed I, I anything? Think, I, I think these things happen every day. And yeah. there's always TV shows like in production and they will never, ever see the light of day. Mm -hmm. There's probably a thousand exactly like this already. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that two of them have contacted me, two entirely different shows that sound the same. Um, Do you on channel as well? Oh yeah, completely different production yeah. channel, probably different platform as well. I think one was like television, one was probably streaming. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, who knows? It's all, it about, BBC, all about it's all about the the product. Yeah, it's all about the money. Yeah. It's a, it's not BBC though, because you talk uh, about the BBC a few times in the in the podcast, and it was I mean, not... <laughs> she was being very coy about one of them. It does. It doesn't feel like a BBC show, to be honest. It feels more yeah. kind of Channel Four or. That kind okay. Of, um... It could be just great if it happens. Yeah. I mean, what one of the people I spoke to was was definitely like from satellite, like cable TV. Okay. You know, they have all these kinds of shows, but. I hope I hope it will happen, and you'll be able to talk a little bit about it, like publicly. Or that would be cool. For the tour. Yeah, because we. I'd I'd love a follow up just before it happens to to have a behind the scene. Well, I I didn't know. I mean, it's probably because I'm just fucking on another planet. But I didn't know anything about making fun until it came out. Mm. And like Brett and Steve were like, "What you didn't know about making fun?" I was like, "Well, yeah, unless nobody tells me, how am I gonna know?" <laughs> yeah, I've watched this show with my kids so many times. <laughs> now is we are probably at our six. Nice seventh time i don't know maybe and he loves it so Good. yeah but um, to, to go down go down that route though what would again pretending you are actually in charge of making it down and that you have some say in all of this what should the message of a tv show of this tv show be that anyone can make stuff and that you can 
So even even the person I was talking to about the show, mm. she's like, "Oh, I'm not like you. I'm not creative." I was like, "Of course, everyone's creative. Mm. Like, you might not be a painter, but that doesn't mean you're not. You know, you get up in the morning and you choose your outfit. You make the food you're going to eat. It's all creation. Mm. And I think people are just like people think that they don't know how to do things, and I think everyone is capable of. And that that would be the message for me that you don't you don't need the tools. You don't need the the education." you know you just need to be inspired so if people like us can help that mm. yeah. we kind of have a duty to it i think it's that kind of the thing of like if you have a vision to create something you you will do that whether it's a stick and a pile of dirt or if it is like oh no you can weld you can carpent you can do whatever like if you want to create something to exist in this world you can just draw it in the dirt as you could yeah. weld and fabricate something together exactly or everything else in between including the plastic stuffs and the, so the idea is so so this is this is what i said to her i said you might not you might not know how to weld something together to solve the problem but you know what the problem is yeah if you have a problem and she she kept going on about dog shit all the time i don't know why She's like, <laughs> you need to pick up dog shit i was like funny enough that's just where i've been um and so she has a problem right so she knows there's a problem to solve yeah and if you can articulate the way of solving it you don't know you don't know how you don't have to know how to do it you don't have to know how a welder works you don't have to know you know how to do a dovetail joint mm. but if you can think creatively mm. just get someone else to do it or get someone to teach you how to do it hot dog shit would be cooking paper and a thin plank of wood to do the thing <laughs> have you seen this 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 invention the guy had it's like it's like just a piece of wood and with a I don't know what kind of material it is it's probably plastic but it the the, the plank is like v shaped somehow just like this right. and like there is cooking paper on this side and underneath yeah and when you slide the the board the the, the piece of wood it just makes the cooking paper move forward uh, and yeah, backward yeah. and mm -hmm. you can pick up anything with it without without losing any of it you can even lift ketchup and and the stain of ketchup keeps is its shape Wow. And you can move the ketchup from one place to another, and oh. it doesn't doesn't fucking move. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you can replicate that with cooking paper and a piece of uh, 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 of wood, which is kind of the route I would go for picking up dog shit. Anyway, uh, okay, so we're just talking about a new level of advanced stick technology at this point. Yeah, exactly. Isn't everything, Rasmus? I, I, I guess it is. <laughs> just some sticks are harder than others or metal based I, i'm not sure where i'm going with this anyway <laughs> <laughs> i think it sounds really exciting out and i really hope yes. i mean it's, it is something though when there's two different production companies that phones you up with basically the same idea you've done something yeah, the idea right. is you look like you don't know what you're doing and people can relate to <laughs> it I, 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 yes. idea. <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure you look like the kind of guy who has nice ideas and and take the time and energy to make them happen as they seen in your videos because they've probably found found you on the internet yeah. on youtube making a, a hammer out of bacon or a, a mm. stupid suit of armor full size like which are awesome ideas though and they will they will still get you knowing very well i think that your creativity and your personality are the most important thing that they would require from you like they uh, that to me yeah. is what would make an interesting tv show yeah i don't just want to watch an expert like that's because you can't relate to that <laughs> i can't you know the, it's interesting watching experts but i don't want to watch it regularly on a tv show it depends it depends you know, on it, what kind of expert though because like look like, how good i am at this and you're not that, not necessarily not necessarily, but uh, think think of Forging Fire, for example, another show that my kid watched at, at the moment. Mm. Uh, there is this this bunch of like three the, the, three guys. They are the expert of the show. They are really good at what they're doing. Yeah. 
but they are always like, oh, you did a great job. You have a nice creativity. I like the shape of it. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but nah, I like it. It it doesn't bring anything to the show because they are never showing off their skills. Yeah. And it's only uh, like very PC. It's very politically correct. Like, yeah, yeah you, you did your best, but yeah, you suck at making knives. So go to fuck home. We're going to keep the other guy. It's basically it, right? In a in a nice way, said in a nice way, but that's it. So, expert doesn't don't bring anything to the table when it comes to that kind of show. I think. And I think you, well, you were talking about chess earlier. It's like you're not going to get better at chess if you're the best chess player in the room. Yeah, you, you have to I mean? challenge so yourself. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So you you need to have an environment where you don't know what you're doing yeah. in order to grow. Yeah. Yeah. That that's very true. But how can you, uh, if you're fucking working alone <laughs> in a shed or in a leather working room? Multiple personalities, right? It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And be you. No, but seriously, most of us are, are working alone in our sheds, in our, in our workshop. And it's very difficult to face, uh, face the, the talent and the, the technique, the skills yeah. of, of better people when when all you do is is working on your stuff and never challenging yourself. I don't I don't mean in a competition because it it, it, it can just ruin your your motivation and, and it's it's not it's not but always great but it's not kind of what we also do with social media. Like we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. Yeah, but comparing is not... You know, but it, yeah, comparing yourself as an amateur to someone who is an absolute expert doesn't do you any good. Yeah. But if you can find someone who is like just a tier or two above you, just a few levels ahead, where you can say like, oh, I can see myself doing what they're doing. I just haven't, I just didn't invent it myself. Look how many experience you points you get in Pokemon when you fight like a Pokemon that's like level 100. <laughs> Even if you yes. lose, yes. 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 Well, yes. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I, I, I'd say it pushes you to your limit and beyond, but it doesn't necessarily teach teaches you anything else than push your limit and 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 go beyond them like everything that you learn you will learn by yourself it's not like someone is teaching you something that will be of, of some use in your future the only thing that he teaches you is like do better at what You're you are currently doing well, not, not necessarily so, but it's such an american approach to things though mm. i don't think that's the way that you encourage people yeah, that's why that's that that's why what I say. That's that's why I don't think that social media are, are a good way to um get better or anything. It can be motivational. It can be can it can encourage you to do better because you see better products, better stuff, well made, hmm. better than yours. So yeah, yeah, I I as I said, I want to do that. I think I'm able to do that. So I'm gonna push my limits. And and make a better one next time, hmm. but it's always you with you again. It it's not it, it's not like a teacher that will um, push your creative creativity or your technique towards something that he already has established as a goal for your next step of development. If it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but doesn't that just depend on? the goal and what you're trying to actually achieve yeah uh, yeah yeah of course because like yeah you can absolutely sort of be unmotivated but find a teacher and still <laughs> learn and improve things yeah or you can have only motivation and then fuck around a whole lot and then figure <laughs> things out <laughs> <I'm super motivated. laughs> i mean yeah so what would be the tv show what, which one would be the tv show I, I think it would, I mean, you want it to be entertaining. You want, it, you want to see people you can relate to, as Al said, figuring things out, building on knowledge mm -hmm. and getting better and also showing that, hey, I now know more than I did and you could do the same. So, of course, the more of the just fuck around and find out would be a lot more interesting. Mm. 
I, what I, I, I mean, like... that would be that's a great name for a TV show. Fuck around and find out <laughs> <laughs> about, about cops and and criminals. Maybe <laughs> maybe not about making. <laughs> Or it could be try that and go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like what you said about like you watch a show to encourage your own creativity by watching someone who doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. And therefore, at the end of the episode, at the end of the show, he knows more compared to what he, he knew at the beginning. If Rocky was the best boxer in the world at the start of Rocky 1, it would be a boring film. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I fully agree, but there is a lot of shows now in that kind of like uh, um, domain where they only show people who are already good at doing something and they never, they, they don't learn anything at the end of the show. They have the knowledge, boring. not necessarily making fun. Like Jimmy knows everything from at the beginning and at the end, he knows the same amount of things. At the end, he has just made something that a kid required, usually fun and stupid, mm -hmm. but the knowledge is still there at the end, like the same as it was at the beginning. I doubt that Jimmy learned anything. But that's, when that's he... what I was going to ask. What's, what's Jimmy getting out of it then? The fun, the money, the fame, the, the making with friends for three months. I don't know. I have, I have no idea. We should ask him, but... What would you get from from making that kind of show? Oh. I'd want to grow. I'd want to learn mm. and go, shit, I, I didn't think I was able to do that, but I tried and, I, and it turns out I could do it. <laughs> so it would be definitely more a show about you do something and you learn along the way than... But then that's, just... how, that's how people get behind you. Yeah, yeah. The, compared to the ones that we already have, like I'm gonna show you what I can yeah. do. I show you I'm gonna expose my skills to the world because I'm fucking good. Nobody cares about that. I mean, it, some people do, but it it it, it's, it doesn't have longevity. Yeah, because you can't you can't just keep watching that. It's like, well, yeah, I know you're good. So what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, people like seeing people fail. Yeah, the underdog. Yeah, rookie. Mm. He he loses the fight at the end of Rocky One. Yeah. Therefore, it's Rocky 2 is in... <laughs> He's 40 years old for you if you haven't seen Rocky now. <laughs> He's retired <That> is... <laughs> in Rocky 1. <laughs> no, but that makes Rocky 2 interesting. And mm. therefore, Rocky 3 also interesting. Because it's always like waving between victory and defeat. And you never know which one it will be. Because it, the guy has doubts and he's still learning and developing and growing. And therefore... Well then you that's just nailed that's... it then then the whole concept should be about just development growth sure I, change. I i think i i would watch it though yeah but i also watched making fun knowing that well that the guys in the show already are just applying applying the skills that they already have yeah. by making stuff just fun for the kids Jimmy is Jimmy, so you, you yeah. have this kind of basic Im image of him that he knows everything and he can make everything. But you're also watching because you want to 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 see how he did it. You know that very well that he didn't learn shit during the show, but you want to see how he solves the problem. So that can also be interesting, like the process of solving a problem, not only learning. I'm all about learning as a teacher. Mm. So go for it. I, I would watch that. If you are, if you know more at the end of the show than you knew at the beginning, that's great. You learned something, we learned something. It was fun for both of us. At the end, there's a product that is hopefully fun and functional. That, that's freaking great. I would watch that. Is that something to focus on? Probably. I, said, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's <laughs> the one in charge today. <laughs> uh, do you have a focus, Al? Uh, I've got a couple. So my main focus, probably for this past month, mm -hmm. has been throwing everything away. Oh, Ooh. nice. Because I'm moving house in like two months. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, what? Yeah. I've, Why? Because I've just spent £100,000 on rent and thought, and finally realized it was just a really terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Because so? I could have bought a house for that. <laughs> so, wait, 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 do you actually have a ha, so have need? something lined up? Uh, yeah, so my grandfather's house. 
Okay. Oh. Which he no longer lives in it because he's now soil. Um, is that's a way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, it's near to a factory, and it was usually rented out to people working in the factory. Okay, but it's not really sustainable. Uh, so I'm like, I'll live there. Yeah. Um. So why, why is it not sustainable? Because of uh, the because noise the, it, it, it's or? not. Um. You can't rely on the the people always being there. Okay. And the, oh, the factory is like closing down, I think. So there's not like it used to be this huge industry, and now there's hardly anyone there. Yeah, so right. this place is now not not worth being in. Mm. Um, so I have to get rid of a lot of shit in order to move to this house. <laughs> that's why smaller? that's why moving is is interesting because it yeah. it forces you to to make choices. I'm being so ruthless. It's like I don't need this. I don't. I didn't, why was I keeping this? Like, mm -hmm. yes, I could make something out of it. But I don't have time, and mm. I don't have the space, so it's like get rid of it. How many guitars are you keeping? All of them. <laughs> oh, okay, good. good. Just <laughs> not a monster. <laughs> um, small. I'm getting rid of small things. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Small things that you can just put in the bin. The uh, extra game. No, like, you. like obviously the shack is full. I need to empty yeah. the shack. The, the loft in the house is full. Every room, I have a room full of engines and gearboxes. It's like, mm -hmm. I, 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 <laughs> how many gearboxes do. do I need? I have more gearboxes than I have cars. <laughs> this is not sustainable. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, last week I shredded 20 years of paperwork. Holy shit. Which was wow. super good. Because well, like, when you live in the Netherlands, there's so much fucking red tape. Mm -hmm. They send you a letter, and like a legal form for everything, right? So I, I had bureaucracy from different countries, <laughs> yeah, um, mm -hmm. and different lifestyles and different careers, and I just had all this paperwork, and I was like, why the fuck am I am I keeping this? I'm yeah, never going to work, I'm never going to work in this industry again. I'm never going to go and live in the Netherlands again. I'm never going to it's like fuck it. So I just shred, I've shredded my entire life. Don't you have the obligation nice. to keep at least some paper for like fuck ten them, years? Right. What are they going to okay. do? No, I don't know. I'm just asking. <laughs> I did the gone. same thing not that long ago uh, when we moved into the new apartment. So it was like a year and a half ago. And it was like the, the 10 years had passed. So right. I was like, yeah, I'm, I I burnt everything. Yeah. And and I was I was lighter by 200 kilos or something yeah. of, of just fucking paper yeah. of old boxes of paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also this stuff has now been shredded and can be turned into new paper. Nice. So we're going to make some books and, you know, it'd be some nice mm. experience from this. Um, but yeah, just getting rid of junk, getting rid of scrap, like scrap wood. I don't need all this scrap wood. Why, mm. why have you got it? Get rid of it. Like the scrap metal guy is now my best friend. So I'm just <laughs> nice. giving him like three vans full of stuff, you know, old car doors, just shit I'm never going to use. Like, uh, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be a nice experience because I'm going to hopefully empty the shack, take the shack with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then that's kind of like it's a fresh start now, and it's empty, yeah. and I can actually use it now. So mm -hmm. hopefully, it'd be like a change of scenery, change of pace, change of life. I'm doing a totally different thing now. When are you that's, moving? Uh, it's March. March. So like, yeah, there's going to okay. be a like a crossover in March of a couple of weeks where I can actually move because it's maybe like two hours away. Okay. Oh, right. a lot of, and I have six cars to transport, so it's gonna be a <laughs> journey. Yeah, I bet. You're moving oh, yeah. up north or south? Uh, kind of north, yeah. Yeah. More okay. north. And, and you more north? West. That sounds yeah. scary. Even colder and more miserable. Yeah. Oh, but that's better. It is. No. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Uh quick question though, with the place you're moving in, do you have to, to prep it? You have something to to uh like remake it's, the walls or whatever? I mean before? it's 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 very dated, but yeah. it doesn't bother me. It's livable. Okay. I don't care. Okay. Um yeah. Okay. I, there's gonna be a roof <laughs> and electricity, so that's all I need. And the internet, hopefully. Apparently it's really good. Okay, cool. Oh. Yeah, so that's a, a bonus. Nice. Oh, Steve is gonna hate you. Yeah, <laughs> but he he won't be able to tell me because he's in my <laughs> Very true. Very true. That's been my focus. Damn. Nice. Uh, but I'm my focus you, about three minutes before coming on the show was watching uh, Barnaby Dixon's new video. I don't know if you've seen it. No, no I haven't. It, it's really good, and there's a lovely surprise in it. YouTube. Yeah. 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 
Barnaby Dixon, the puppet. No. Yeah. So yeah. So he's making a new version of his puppet because it's kind of worn out. Okay. And he's got someone to help him. And it's. Nice. I, I didn't realize. I didn't expect it. And it was just nice. The last one from a few hours ago. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. We'll put the link in the thing. Was Red... me? My turn. Yes, you. Um. Okay. So <laughs> it's gonna sound fucking weird. But anyway, um. I love it yeah. already. Yeah, I'm sure it does. You do. Uh, my kid the other day was kind of bored. I was working on the the um, leather chess uh, board thingy. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he was at home. The, the teacher was, was sick. It was on, probably on Monday or something. And he was kind of bored. I couldn't be with him that much. Um, so at the end of the af afternoon, he was playing Fortnite on, on my PS5. And I was like, no. hey, teach me. No. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> so he taught me to play how to play Fortnite. And it's a fucking fun game. Fuck. It's, it's surprisingly fun. So now, um, when I, when I come back home around five with my kiddo, I'm playing Fortnite with a bunch of ten years old <laughs> guys on the internet. <laughs> At least I hope you're kicking their arse. Well, I'm I'm improving. Um, <laughs> um, uh, they, wait, oh if you God. if you think you're good at video games, go play Fortnite. It's a it's a good test. It, it's it's good for your ego. Because those kids who are playing Fortnite, have been playing Fortnite for months, will kick your butt <laughs> like it's nothing. There's, so there's a few in, in other news. <laughs> apparently, we're looking for a new co-host of the podcast. <laughs> no, it's no. You only uh, plays League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure that would be would be better. <laughs> no, no. So my 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 focus is not necessarily Fortnite, but. Um, the fact that you can now play with uh, random people or friends, uh, you can play a game on the internet with people living like miles away in a different country or whatever is just fucking amazing. And the fact that as a kid, you can do that with your classmates and create bonds with them uh, is something that I would love. Uh, um, I would I would have loved to have that if that grammatically makes sense yep. when I was a kid um because I'm, I I was not living near my friends we were a little bit out of the the city uh, and it was very difficult to have some kind of uh, interaction with people that I knew during the weekends mm -hmm. and now you can do that so playing online with friends is just a fucking nice thing to do if you can't just meet with other people and Fortnite is just a fun game. So yeah, just, just do it if you can just at least give it a try and it will teach you humility. Give it a try like, Raz. For, for, yeah, Fortnite, Raz. No. Please. yeah. I, I actually, I actually did play a bit of Fortnite when it came out ages ago and realized, it, no, this is not for me. <laughs> apparently it has changed a lot. I, so... I yeah, I know. I, I mean, it, when I played it was like whatever they called season one or something mm -hmm. or even before that maybe yeah uh, and it was like yeah it's a fun thing it was either that or playing PUBG, and i was like uh mm. no I, I'm i understand it's not for for everyone but the, those kids are having a lot of fun doing it and and i'm la having a lot of fun playing with them uh so yeah i have i have my son next to me and in the chat two or three other guys with a very tiny voice like <laughs> <laughs> kill them kill them <laughs> the end. which is super fun and and so cute so yeah i'm 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 having fun i i had fun this week doing that so yeah nice. I, on that note i do actually have a lot of really good memories playing world of warcraft with some friends mm. and uh a lot of friends like from the scouts and all of that including uh, one of our friends dad who was also the scout leader. Yeah, nice. That was a big like mashup of uh, connections, but it was a great amount of fun to have sort of him along and being early teens and to go raid up around Nox and like all of the fun stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it does also slightly segue, segue into one of my side focusy things. Uh, mm -hmm. First and foremost, Dandles, 
was yes. awesome for coming and spending a week with me, helping me out with the market, even though so far nothing really have come out of it. But hopefully by next episode, I will have some positive news. Fingers crossed. Vandals yep. and especially Bevel on Instagram, his uh, professional account when it comes to hand-turned, handmade kitchenware in woody stuffs. And a part of what, what we did a lot that was really, really fun was that we went to the market, we s s walked and sat and talked and didn't do much while waiting for people to come. And then we went home and we played Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Hot seat. <laughs> nice. So See, up until like, about games. Yeah, so up until like 1 a.m. we were sitting there, we were playing Heroes and like, this, this, this is brilliant. I, like you said, didn't do that since before i was like on the internet daily mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so yeah that was great fun and I, I i don't know uh i guess my focus is have fun with friends in the same room and not just online so mine is online yours is, is in the same room so but yeah, just mine is throw everything away <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not your console though they, they keep keep the consoles too. i play i've turned mine on for the first time I, it's been so long that my controllers were no longer registered to my console. <laughs> oh. That's a that's a nice thing. To yeah. We should create a online gaming club for makers or something. Go. Could be fun. I think there's a Discord channel. Yeah, but I, I don't get any notification or nothing is happening at the moment. So we should like revive that. Oh, we don't have a Discord channel. I'm just saying there is a Discord channel. Oh, there channel. is. I, yeah, I think yeah. there are Discord channels. Good. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> it is a moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, well, but maybe, maybe we'll have a think about it and actually drop some links for the next episode. Sure. Because, yeah, I agree. It would be fun, especially because I'm kind of waiting eagerly for Baldur's Gate 3 to come on some kind of discount on Steam Store so I can actually play it. You have so, Hmm? You haven't yet? I, I no. thought it when it was out. No. Okay. No, no, not yet. I, I've just realized this is a scary game for me and I really want to play it. Yeah. But also with so much other shit going on, it's like, no, I don't have time. I'll hopefully be able to just buy it when some kind of Steam sale is on. So cool. eventually. And it would be fun to play something like that with friends where we can yeah. actually sit, hang out and banter and Pretend we're on a podcast. Totally. Like you do, Al. I Where can people find you? Yeah. Not on a podcast. I can't remember the last time we did a podcast. I think the last episode of a podcast I did was someone else's podcast. <laughs> 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 like this one. Yeah. Um, yes. You will find me, hopefully, in a couple of months in a new, in a new shack. Nice. In a, in a new county. Nice. Throwing things bit. away. You will find me at the local tip, getting rid of stuff. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Great. And if you want to find us collectively, you can do that at Two Thirds Focus. You will find me <laughs> on the set <laughs> of a TV show, Hopefully. making the greatest TV show ever. Yes. Wonderful. Please. And one that is av available internationally, please. Like, Oh, we have a Jamie. We'll, we'll get a hold of it. Yeah. But it really sucks because online every every streaming platform that you go when it's from the UK is like, oh, you're not from the UK, so you can't watch that thing. Yeah, fuck you. No, you know how it feels. When yeah. You're a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> uh, well, blah, 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 blah. you can find me, Rasmus Lewin, at at all the social places and Lewinsmeer.no. <laughs> you had a blank suddenly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you can find me at the Red Smith or Red Smith everywhere on the internet, more specifically at the redsmith.com. And yeah. you can probably find a cat invading the camera <laughs> on Al. <laughs> uh, and you can probably find Jan back here next week. Uh, thank you, Al, for being on and thank for you, keeping Al. the cat at bay up until the very end. <laughs> trying to the cat is computing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening. Have a good week. Bye bye. bye. Say bye, Jazz. Bye now. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs>